In this lecture, we'll explore IEEE 754 floating point binary, and more specifically, how to convert between decimal numbers and floating point numbers. So just to recap on a few important concepts and terms, a real number is a number that can be found on a number line. They include whole numbers, rational numbers, and irrational numbers. Scientific notation helps us represent very large numbers. So 225 million in scientific notation is 2.25 times 10 to the power of eight. We'll be using the word mantissa a lot. So what is a mantissa? A mantissa are the digits without the exponent part. So in 2.25 times 10 to the power of eight, 2.25 is the mantissa. So let's look at how we can convert the number 65 decimal to floating point. Now, half precision floating point is just 16 bits. So the, the entire number is going to be 16 bits long. But in your area of study, you may have a different allocation for the number of bits for the mantissa or the number of bits for the exponent. So we have the number 65.0. So this is fixed point. We haven't, we haven't normalized it. And, it's, and it's fixed point binary is very easy. All it is is the decimal place is there. Anything to the right of the decimal place will take the form of 1 over 2, 1 over 4, 1 over 8 etc. 1 over 16. In this case, it's 65.0, so we end up with 65.0, nothing there. Now, to normalize this number, we need to move the decimal place over until it sits between the leftmost 0 and the leftmost 1. And in this case, it takes us 7 moves. So our exponent becomes 7, and we end up with 65 normalized and an exponent of 7. Let's look at another example of 23.50. So in fixed point, this is easy again. We have 23.1 over 2. So this gives us 0.5, but it's not normalized. To normalize it, we need to move the decimal place over until it sits between the leftmost zero and the leftmost one. In this case, it takes us five moves. So our exponent becomes five, and we end up with the number 23 normalized and an exponent of five. And if we wanted to reverse this number, all we have to do is just put the decimal place here, and we can move it over one, two, three, four, five, and we end up with the number we had originally. Let's look at a negative number in this case, negative 25. So we have negative 25. Now we need to get this number into two's complement. So 25 negative is going to give you this number. And if you don't remember the technique for the quick conversion of the number into two's complement or to negative, just go over here to the right side and you look for the first one, you leave it and you flip everything after that. So we look for the first one, we leave it and we flip everything after that. And that gives us negative 25. And now we have a negative representation of 25, negative 25. And we do the same thing. We move it over until it sits between the leftmost zero and the leftmost one. And in this case, it's going to be a move of five, giving us an exponent of five. And we now have a number negative 25 with an exponent of five. And we'll look at how to convert this number back easily in the next few sections. Now it gets a little trickier because we have negative 25.5. So we write the number out, and then we convert the number to a negative number. But we use the one that we originally had here. So now we have 1.011. So we, we reverse the number, two's complement, we look for the first one, and then we keep it and flip everything else after that. So now we end up with negative 25.5. Now we can make the move so, so that the decimal place sits between the leftmost zero and the leftmost one. It gives us an exponent of five again, and we have our final answer here. So let's look at some examples of how to convert from half precision to decimal. So here we have this number, and we have the decimal place sitting between the leftmost one and the leftmost zero. And we have an exponent of seven. So in this case, just like we did with the other conversion, we can move our decimal back to the right, and we can restore our original number back to 65. And to reverse it, we'll just reverse the algorithm. So here's a tricky one where we have a negative floating point number, and we need to convert it back to decimal. So in this case, we won't do anything different. We'll still move the decimal place over based on the number of moves and the exponent. So we move that over here. And once we've done that, then we can restore the original number. And we'll get the number 513. And then we need to remember to add the negative in our answer. So here's another tricky scenario. We have a negative number with a negative exponent. We need to figure out what the exponent is, and that's negative 3. Instead of moving to the right, we're going to move to the left. And remember, when you, when you have a negative exponent, it usually means you're going to have a very small number. So we move the decimal place over to the left. Once we have that, we can now convert it out of 2's complement to get our number, which is going to be 0 0.046, etc. And once we have that number, we know that it was a negative number. This is negative 0.046. When we look at the size of the mantissa and the exponent, we need to understand that increasing the size of the mantissa will increase the accuracy of the number. And when we increase the size of the exponent, we actually get a larger range of numbers. There is a phenomena in floating point where we end up with a rounding error. So when we try to add 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 in Python 3, for example, we end up with a very strange situation. That's because, as you may have noticed, when we did 1 over 2, 1 over 4, 1 over 8, you're going to end up with some values that cannot be represented. So what do we do in this case? 
Well, we need to figure out the absolute error. And the formula for the absolute error is the actual number minus the closest represented value. So in this case, 0 0.8 minus 0 0.78125, which is the closest represented value that we can get. And we end up with the absolute error of 0 0.018. To get the relative error, we just need to go ahead and divide that by the actual number. So the absolute error divided by the actual number will give us 2.3%.